Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and this is kind of a war recap, just showing some of the highlights from this war. There were some amazing attacks. We're gonna take a look at a lot of them today, uh, quite a few. It's gonna be a long video. I'm gonna briefly just kind of recap the war. If you haven't seen the stream, it's uploaded as a regular video. It's about an hour long. I recommend if you have the time, check it out. It's a, it was a lot of fun. I do a live attack on the stream. Uh, you can hear the final moments, see all the final attacks for the most part. Um, I think there might be one or two attacks that might have been partially shown that you'll see the full attack of today. So that way, um, I don't want to, you know, I want to make sure all the good attacks are shown in their full glory. So um, talking about the war, Forbidden had a great war. You know, this is the best I think they've performed this season. No dip fails. Um, great 10 v 11 and. A few 10 v 10s basically they only had to dip seven times because they got three 10 v 10s and that allowed them to go for one uh, three star attempt on one of our 11s it did not work out but 86 stars very difficult uh, their town hall nines did a great job setting them up and allowing them to get the uh allowing them to not have to dip at all on the town hall nines plus have scouts almost on every town hall 10 uh, we struggled with nines a little bit, had to dip a few times. Uh, 10 v 11 we struggled with as well, went like 3 for 11, but the dips were perfect, 7 for 7, 2 10 v 10s, which is pretty good. We like to go for 3, but 2 is, it's pretty good. So 85 stars, a great performance from us, the most stars this season actually. We just went up against a good clan that was on a good day, which is a very bad combination uh, for us to face. So with that all <clears throat> being said, going to show attacks on both sides, not just by <clears throat> excuse me, One Hive Genesis, but also um, a few of their attacks as well, because honestly, all the bases have been burned over the course of, I think, almost a 24-hour stream. There were people streaming this war at all different times, so all the bases are pretty much burned. Might as well show some of the best attacks here. This one was one of my own, a 10 v 11 attempt, and a lightning spell. You might think, okay, did I accidentally bring a lightning spell? What's the possible reason for that? Um, you'll see at the end of the attack, it's uh, pretty cool how it works out. Um, <clears throat> anyway though, it's originally this uh, base was attacked with dragons, which was a pretty good plan, but this guy put almost all his Seeking Air Mines right by the town hall, which makes it very difficult to use dragons. Um, because of that, it was determined that a, basically a queen charge at the town hall uh, with a golem in front of her could work out very well. So all this at the beginning is just for percentage, plus the CC lure is going to be important um, to make sure that uh, Lava Hound doesn't come out. The last attacker um, got pretty unlucky. You guys saw it in the Live with One Hive video that was uploaded, I think, two days ago. Um, you, it was Sub-Zero attacking this base, and he had a very close one, um, but the Lava Hound somehow came out and got locked onto the Queen, which ruined the attack. So instead, doing a baby dragon kill, bringing it all the way down, using the archers, and then poison as soon as that Hound pops, a very classic way to kill that uh, Hound. Here we go with everything else. Uh, the Eagle just now is lighting up, so that's good. Uh, basically, Golem on each side, Bowlers behind, a Rage on each side, and then up the middle, Jump, Golem, a few Vax to clear out any Skellies, and just kind of help take out the remaining buildings in front of the Queen, and let her snipe the Town Hall. That's pretty much all we're doing here. Uh, she gets locked on, about 46% here, 47 Right here, I get the 50 um, as soon as I pop the Queen's ability on the Town Hall right here. 50, uh, right as she takes out the wizard tower actually, or the inferno tower, that gets us the 50. However, this lightning spell, dropping it right there, get six buildings with it. That was insane value. Actually, the birthday boom might have been a, a decent idea. I don't know if it would have gotten all six though. So lightning spell uh, was a good play there. Six extra buildings, that's huge, even for the uh, investment of two spell space, which a elixir spell takes up, but I think it was worth it. Um, good percentage there. Switching over to one of their 10 v11s, um, we'll get into 11 v11 and uh, a few, actually not 11 v11, 11 v10. We're going to show a few 11 v10s just because it's not that often that we can, and I think people can learn from them. So we'll show a few dips, we'll show some 10 v10s, and some 9v9s, just a lot of stuff to show you guys today. <clears throat> Excuse me, so um, this next attack is by uh, NC Lunatic, 
and he's going to do a queen walk. We'll fast forward um, just for sake of time. And all these attacks going to fast forward um, if I can to try to just save some time, fit all the content I can into maybe a 20 minute video, hopefully. So this was a great walk. Um, one rage basically takes out a ton of uh, buildings. Percentage is great. Also clearing out a funnel. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. Um, the CC lure was kind of unsuccessful there, so he goes ahead and just forgets about the CC. But one rage, great value, got about 30% out of that walk, and does wall breakers to let her exit, although she does go through the wall right here, which he probably wasn't expecting, but he can adapt to it, drop in the king, the golem, or no, no golem, the king <clears throat> in bowlers, and then has these valks for the town hall dive. Now one thing we were talking about in the space is the expos probably should have been on ground to make the walk much more difficult. Those expos probably would have been able to reach the queen uh, even in that last compartment there. So that's one adjustment we could make to this base if it was used in the future. Um, but anyway, the Valks actually don't get the town hall. There's just so much there. Um, a little bit of luck is involved, but I think in most 10v11s, uh, luck is somewhat important. So especially on a fresh hit, which this was a fresh hit, it just kind of all works out. Uh, again, if the expos were grounded, which I think is going to become more of a of a popular thing at Town Hall uh, 11 bases, if um, two, even all four of those expos are grounded, the queen's going to go down. Um, at the beginning, she'll need more rages, and on that Town Hall, the expos would have been able to possibly bring her down. So one thing to think about, especially on a very spread out base almost, um, to have the, uh, the expos really guarding those queen walks and stuff. Uh, moving on, 11v10, base number 6 on both sides. It'll be our big sub-zero, who you guys saw with the live from one high video. Then we'll take a look at one of our own dip attacks. This one done a minute 30, so the miners just tore through this base right here. Um, let's fast forward, because he drops down um, a few archers. I, th I like dropping at any attack, just dropping some cleanup right at the beginning, whether it's an archer that can snipe 3 or 4 buildings, a minion, um, even a wizard sometimes. Good trade in my opinion, but anyway, time wasn't an issue as you guys saw. So the king and bowlers on one side, very standard attack. He'll drop the queen on the other. Oops, sorry about that. I thought I was at the bottom of the screen. No, he drops the queen at the top there. She gets some Teslas. I think most of these bases were scouted, which makes it very easy for them to, you know, be certain it's a Lava Hound Balloon CC, which in that case just has to poison the balloon and he's good. So there's the poison on the loon. Um, one rage. Sometimes the rage is helpful if the core is packed with all these defenses, which in this case you have the bomb towers, the heroes, a lot for the miners to get through. Warden is still up. He used the Warden's ability early, which is typically how you do it. Use the tome first, then kind of heal more specific groups towards the end. So last heal is about to go down on that wizard tower, and then uh, look at all those miners left up. Very uh, nice, well done attack. Good job to all the Town Hall 11s really in this war. Both clans going, I think, 7 for 7 on dips. Is it? Yeah, both clans used 7 attacks. There were no dip fails. Uh, so, yeah, 7 of those 11s were successful. 7 for 7 on dips. So, um, that's a pretty good statistic because it's actually, I'd say, it's more common to have at least 1 or 2 dip fails than to be perfect in these wars in Premiere. So, next one is Trigger Man. This is the other strategy that I think is... Um, right there with miners being one of the mo more popular ones. We see Laloon, we see hogs uh, now and again, but these are the two by far most common strategies. And when these air defenses are on the outside, and you can kind of directly target them with loons. It makes it that much easier. Now the queen sniped one up top, the loons will directly target the other one. And then in terms of these back end, uh, back end air defenses, it just comes down to hasting a few loons in and that'll pretty much take them out with no defenses in front of them as there are uh, in this base. So uh, he uses a clone on two dragons, which I think is actually a better play um, to, for a dip. Now, if you're a Town Hall 10, sometimes cloning the balloons can get you some great value. But in terms of just overpowering a base, two level 6 dragons being added at a key point in the base can be very successful. These level 7 balloons, I think... If, it were, if those were level 6, the air defense would not have gone down. But because at Town Hall 11, you have those level 7 loons able to just um, get that last crash to take out the air defense there. Uh, still would have been a 3 star anyway because he has so many dragons left up. I think 4 of them right there, uh, plus the king. So nice stuff to Trigger Man. Good attack. Um, 
to him. And now let's move on to some 10v10s. We'll start with one of theirs. I am gonna save a few 10v10s for another video I'm making, because uh, we had five of them. You'll see three in this video, and then you'll see a few more in another video. This one was a hog attack. This was probably my favorite attack of the war, to be honest, um, of any side. They had, um, this was just insane value at every point. The queen getting three cannons and two mortars, that's nice for a hog attack. And you gotta figure there's probably a spring trap between the air defense cannon and air defense cannon on both of those areas. So eliminating some very high uh, DPS point defense and also some spring trap possibilities and getting a nice funnel there for his bowlers. Uh, basically one side, a very deep funnel, can kind of lean the bowlers towards that side. Some nice bounces off the town hall, I think get onto the wizard tower and stuff. Two golems it looks like, yeah, I think he had two golems there. Uh, wall breaks in, maybe just one golem, can't, can't quite see. Uh, but anyway, comes in with the kill squad, has the rage right there. Um, poison on the loon. It is a <clears throat> it is a hound CC, so that makes it um, all the more easier. The troops push through, get these core uh, giant bombs, Teslas, Expos, stuff that makes the hog uh, pathing difficult. And then look at this, has some hasted loons into this inferno tower. Now, when I watched this attack right at this moment, I uh, I came into the attack, and it was so weird seeing these balloons just sprint across the middle of the base there, because for some reason these loons just don't die. They like continue through the attack, so it's a pack of hogs and loons, which are both being healed by these heals. It was just a crazy attack, but without the loons, um, the hogs would have gotten the job done. The loons were just for that uh, inferno tower, but they got so much more because there weren't any air traps really uh, to take them out. So finally the loons go down right at the end there, but has plenty of hogs for cleanup. Not a ton of other troops besides the hogs, just a few minions. So he was relying on a lot of hogs being left up, but there were, I think he gets a split at some point. Yeah, hog split there, which is always helpful. And it's a three star two clan war killer who I think this guy would had a, a six star war if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, he did, he did. Um, we're looking at, let's see here. I wrote down, okay, 13 on both sides as well. So we're taking a look at both this guy's attacks. He is, his next one was a dragon attack and a very nice one as well. Fast forward to the start here. Um, I believe he clones the loons. So like I said, for these 10v10 dragon, like the cloned bone or whatever it's called, uh, you want to clone the loons typically if you're a 10. If you're an 11, that clone spell is uh, makes it so you can clone two dragons, which I think is worth it typically. Just clone those dragons. They're, they're your best bet to overpower the base. Now, um, to the credit of Zack of Blades, this one took uh, four Town Hall 10 attacks to be three-starred, I think. Um, they failed quite a bit with some Laloon variations before they tried dragons here, which uh, ultimately worked. So it was a good base, um, and it's a low level base at that. It's our second to bottom base. So uh, I think this this base did its job. It's just they had so many Town Hall 10 attacks because they didn't have to dip it all on the nines. And I think they cleared the 10 v 11 in about eight attacks or so, which is very helpful for 10 v 10 efforts. It's something we did the last two weeks, but weren't able to do this week. Uh, we went three for 11, I believe. You guys saw some of the last attacks on those 11s in the stream, just couldn't quite get it done. Uh, there's the loons and there's the clone spell. You can see clones them early, why not? Make sure he doesn't get the hound. I think it's a level one clone spell, so it only has about uh, 25 or so uh, clone spell capacity. So really not cloning a whole lot, but an extra four to five loons is uh, helpful and they will do their job before they disappear here. Uh, but the dragons still left up and just one archer tower helped that he had the town hall nine level archer towers and the town hall nine level expos um, good base identification to know to use uh, a air attack and a overpowering air attack at that okay um i think we have four more attacks to take a look at next one is going to be 13. um i forgot to turn off my notifications here but uh looks like we have a good matchup for our mid-war week uh we just spun to uh, to face our next clan here after that after this war so got another war coming up maybe get some good content from it as well looks like it'll be a good one uh, this one is Boudreaux and very nice attack 
I think this was a cleanup. There was one Town Hall 10 attack on this, and then we were able to get it on the second one here. A great plan, and I love how he, the first attacker used a queen walk. Not a great base to queen walk. You can't, um, you can't reach like these expos, these archer towers, these cannons. There's so many, excuse me, defenses that, um, that can't be queen walked. The queen can't reach them. So it kind of says that, hey, maybe just use a suicide queen. Uh, she gets some great value because that baby dragon tanks. She walks down, gets the archer tower, uh, pops the ability, gets some very good value here, clearing out buildings for the miners, then just uses all the spells on the miners, rages them, heals them. The rage is right in the core there to get them through some of these core buildings, which is important. The next heal goes down, and the king and bowlers, um, I don't know if you guys were watching them, they got some great value right there. The king uh, wall, or no, it doesn't wall break. The king just breaks the wall with his sword, comes in, and lets the bowlers get in on the action. They take out like an archer tower right there. Almost get the archer tower, not quite. Uh, but they took out some buildings to help funnel the miners in. And right towards the end here has that last heal, which is just perfect. The miners split, take out these last point defense. We'll fast forward to the end because it's GG. Um, let's move on to the Town Hall 9 attacks, but um, before I do, just I uh, want to say great job to the Town Hall 10s on both sides for 10v10. Uh, it was a great 10v10 war. Uh, 2 and 3, very solid stuff. They couldn't get my base though. They, had, <laughs> they tried 4 times, they could not take down my troll base. So uh, I'm feeling good about that at least. Uh, moving on, we'll take a look at one of our Town Hall 9s, uh, Yazbek. This one was a, kind of a funny attack. You'll see what I mean here. Um, let's go to the beginning. So he drops down the golem. It's a fresh hit. Doesn't know it's in the CC. Uh, but the golem just tanks those Teslas. So it actually works out pretty nicely there. He probably would have dropped his golems in about the same angle as they actually walk up to the Teslas. So that's all good. Takes out some Teslas ahead of time. And right here he's going to drop in his heroes. And then try to wall break in. And then uh, jump over the middle of the base here, but um, if you if you watch this, the queen takes out some of these defenses, then she's going to walk around the base, uh, by the way, very patient wall breakers, which was good, except it made the queen walk the wrong way, but it's a hound in the CSC, so it all works out in the end, he just goes ahead and poisons on top of the queen, and the hound will just sit there, nothing will even bother it, so... The bowlers, the king, the golem can move through the base without having to stop for CC troops. Gets the king, going to get some of those expos as they move up to the top of the base. Meanwhile, the queen goes around. Uh, she tanks for the hogs. She takes out about three or four defenses that the hogs would otherwise have to deal with. So makes it much easier on the hogs. And because of that, he can heal much later than he probably planned on. Has the poison for the skellies. And the king and the bowlers get such great value that they clear out the expo compartment. So all that's left is a few defenses at the top of the base. Has one back end loon and gets the swag a heal spell. So that was pretty cool. A swag heal on the first uh, attempt on this base. It was one of the, uh, the the few Town Hall 9 attacks that really was that top level. We we did struggle with Town Hall 9s. We had some good ones, but just a lot of them were either very close. Um, we had some 99 percenters, which always hurt. We had a 99 percent dip fail, actually, um, on a Town Hall 9, which is... Uh, that hurts when the Town Hall 10 dips and fails and gets 99%. I guess any dip fail hurts, especially towards the end of the war. Uh, probably wouldn't have made a difference in, the, in hindsight. It would have been difficult for us to win this war, if I can diverge for a moment. Um, basically, they got 86 stars, but they had good percentage on our uh, Town Hall... Um, spacing out. On our Town Hall 11s, they had a really good 2-star percentage. Uh, one of their attacks, they had the base built, and... It was the base that both clans had. We both had the same base, actually, which was kind of funny. Just a, a very small difference between them, but for the, for the most part, the same base. And because of that, they were able to get like 67% on it, which is an extremely high two-star. We got like 60%, but they also had some other good percentage attacks, like the one you saw um, earlier in this video. So they had good percentage, which means we would have either had to get better percentage, which would have been pretty tough because they... Um, like I said, we're pretty high there, 
or we would have had to three-star one of their 11s, which is not something we're used to. We're not a very um, 11v11 intensive clan because it's so rare that we see it. So it was a tough war for us to win. Um, not trying to make excuses. Basically, they had a good war, and it would have been very difficult for us to win it, um, keeping in mind that we had to get a Town Hall 11v11 three-star. But still, we, there's a lot of places we could have done better, and we could have given ourselves a much better chance at winning this war. Um, with some more uh, town, town Hall 10 attacks to use for 10v10s to free us up to uh, to maybe get an 11v11 attempt or two without having to rush it the last like two minutes of war. If you guys uh, caught the stream or watched the, the stream uh, afterwards, one of our 11s was trying a three-star attack in the last like six minutes he was planning. So it uh, got kind of crazy and uh, a little bit of better planning may have helped, but it was a good war, and this last Town Hall 9 attack, actually not the last one, we have one more after this, but this was Tom Bombadil, and it was just a nice queen walk hog attack. The queen went the wrong way on this one, I think. I don't think she was intended to walk up, but she got the heroes taken out, which was some good value, <clears throat> and basically allowed the, um, the king and the boulders to come in from 12. They met up. Uh, actually worked out very nicely, jumped into the core, and then the hogs sweep their way through. So, nice attack, giant bomb at the end, but not enough to kill the hogs. We'll move on, one more Town Hall 9 attack to take a look at. This is uh, one of theirs, we're going to go ahead and show one of them, because it was a nice attack. It's number 28 here. Um, on Tom Bombadil, this is Storm, and good base identification. This one actually made me think of a Town Hall 10v10, or uh, 11 v 10 dip because it looks like a cloned bone attack without the clone because it's kind of a mass dragon heroes on each side to funnel the dragons it's almost like a town hall 10 attack on a town hall 9 in a weird way um, it's the exact same principles and stuff that you see in the 10 v 10 attacks so drops down the queen gonna pop her ability and just kind of let her step up get these air defenses taken out I think she gets this next one I can't remember um, we'll see if she steps up for that next air defense or not. But the king up top, just for funneling mainly, he'll tank a little bit. Yeah, right there, the queen barely gets it. I would have brought an extra giant or two because that's a lot of buildings the queen had to take out. Looks like nine buildings at least to get the uh, two air defenses. So played it kind of close there. I guess he had a few extra balloons if he needed them. Probably could have dropped them in there, but uh, I would have used an extra one or two giants. So anyway, the dragons come in going to uh, send a few directly towards that expo, which was a nice play. That way they take out the Tesla Expo Archer Tower area, not going to veer too far down or too far to the top of the base and ignore the bottom. So move through in a very nice, even fashion. Has a heal spell for these dragons, which he'll drop as they encounter the queen down here and some more defenses. The king's still working on the outside, clearing out buildings. And then in just a moment, it's time for Laloon because he has a CC Hound and another like nine balloons coming at this base. And it's plenty to take out these back end defenses, even has a haste as well. These loons are pretty much untouched through the base. Goes ahead and has um, one, two, three, four, five, six dragons. The Hound just pops, has I think like seven of those nine loons, plus the King. He does a full 180 on this base. So a very nice attack. Good way to end this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, just a nice recap and all the best attacks, um, in my opinion, from this war. Going to have a few more attacks shown in a different video, so stay tuned for that. And thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you later. Bisectatron out.